Good day, Grade 12. Welcome to this next lesson on finance. Um, today, on Friday, yay, hey, it's Friday, yay, we made it. Okay, so um, if it's the first time uh, that you're joining us or if you've joined us before but haven't joined the class, I'd like to encourage you to join our Grade 12 science, Maths class. And I'm going to show you very quickly how you would go about doing it. Um, first of all, you go and find your interweb browser, your internet browser. I use Firefox. It really doesn't matter which one you use. And then you go and you type in to enable org to enable.org and you will get to a landing page which will look like this okay so if you've never been to to enable you've just clicked on the links on Facebook or Twitter or whatever to get here then that's fine but otherwise you would have to register so you put your name in your surname and your email address and you register I obviously am already registered so I can just log in and what you will get to is a dashboard that looks like this. It looks like this. I'm just going to make it a bit bigger so you can see it. Okay, so you guys don't have to worry about my classrooms and administration. The thing that you need to worry about is the stuff on the left hand side here, which is curriculum, learner and teacher resources. And you get to choose a subject. So you can click the red button, choose a subject and you will see all the subjects. So you guys can choose to join all the other subjects as well if you want to. Um, there is a reason why you might want to. Okay, so we're choosing maths and we're going to join the grade 12 and we're going to enroll. Okay, so now you are part of the grade 12 class, okay, which means that your grade 12 class is going to be over here. Okay, it's over there. Okay, so then you can click on that button and what will happen is it'll come through with all these steps, which will be all the sections that you might want to go and revise. And the cool thing, grade 12, is that you don't have to only register for grade 12. You can, If you're struggling with a concept that was explained in grade 11, you can register for the grade 11 class as well. But the point is that the reason you might want to is because there's a whole bunch of information behind each of these. If I click begin, yeah. Um, you will see that there's a whole bunch of course content, number patterns, APs, GPs, etc, etc, etc. Okay, but that's beside the point. And it tells you what everything's in here, and then there's teacher resources, there are exam papers, question papers, uh, multiple choice questions, you name it, as well as videos that explain things to you. Over here on the left hand side is the dashboard, which will take you back to where we started. So let's go over there. And then on the left hand side, You've also got upcoming events, revision, live assessments, messaging, and help. Okay, so the reason, there are two reasons why I want you to join the class. The so one is because of live assessments. What I want to do, ideally, is I would like to teach you a section, say for example, finance, and then what I want to do is be able to give you guys a multiple choice question that is, or six questions, a bunch of like 10 or 15 questions that are then on the finance and you can answer them in your own time over the next couple of days or like a two day period or something. And then what happens is you, I see a graph of the results. I don't see that oh, you number X345 or you um, Patricia, whoever did this. All I see is that out of the 50 people or 60 people or 100 people that did the assessment, only um, 10 of them got question three right. And I think, oh, okay, so I go look at what question three is. And I say, oh, okay, that's future value annuities. Right, let me go and prepare some lessons on future value annuities. The whole point about this was that it was supposed to be a feedback system. So ideally, that is what we're going for. Another reason why you want to be, join the class is because you can message me and I'll show you how to do that. So you can message me and you can tell me um, what sections you'd like to go through or if there's certain sections you don't understand or if you have an issue with something that I've said. Maybe I've said that x squared is equal to 2x or something silly, then you're welcome to come and say, uh, excuse me, you made a mistake and I'll go, oops, sorry, let me check that. Yes, you're right. I did it and I'll address and fix it. Or more likely, or not more likely, but more hopefully, um, <laughs> you'll be able to tell me about questions that you're struggling on that I can help with. And then finally, if you belong to this class, then you will get a thing that in the upcoming events. So I obviously own two classes because for today anyway, I've got grade 12 maths and grade 12 science. So these, both of these are on my 
on my upcoming events and you can see old lessons over here on the July 2016, 2016 if you want. So then you would click the view event and you say open live TV link and then you click the um, you can actually choose to open the feed in a new tab, but I haven't done that. Now you click the green button, the whitish blue button is for me. So you join the event and then you watch the video. Now there is a bit of a time in the feedback, so you will hear this on the screen. It's a bit icky when you're hearing it through the screen through my mic. So it's going to sound weird, but it's just to prove to you that actually you are watching. And then you click the... Okay, so there you go. You can actually see this actually happening on the screen. And then what you can do as well is you can message the studio, which means you can message me. And that's the bit that I'm also interested in. I'm interested in the guys giving me, I mean, a couple of weeks ago, we had a couple of students ask for circle geometry and we've had subsequently some kids ask for something else that I will be covering in the next day or two or next week. I'll tell you about that. So basically, as, as soon as you guys message me and say, oh, we're really struggling with, I don't know, stats, or we're really struggling with Venn diagrams, and I can go, right, let's do a lesson on Venn diagrams. Okay, so the whole point is that this is supposed to be a nice feedback loop. Okay, enough about that. Now that you guys know how you can join our class, I am going to carry on with finance, which we started yesterday. And yesterday we were doing this lovely timeline question, where, and I'm going to quickly run through it in case you weren't with us yesterday. Um, dear old, doesn't actually say a name. Okay. So 5,700 Rand was deposited into a savings account over a year. Then two years later, another 1,900 Rand was deposited. I'm not going to work this all out again. I'm just running through this so you can see where we're at. And then there was an interest rate that was the same for the first three years, and then it changed for the last two years. So what we did was we broke it up into three bits. We got a deposit. We got obviously the initial 5,700. We've got a deposit coming in here at um, the two year mark, okay. Then for, the, for that year, it's still the same interest rate as it started with. Then for the next two years, it's at a new interest rate. And we'd already worked out what the outcome would have been after the first two years. And we use that as the principal plus the 1,900 for the next year year and now we're working out this bit here if you're with us is yesterday is us working out the last two months i mean last two years um if you guys are desperate to see this and you're welcome to actually go and look at yesterday's lesson you just go through exactly the same points process except that you go and look for yesterday's date and you'll see yesterday's lesson and then you can watch a recording of it okay so now the last thing i asked you guys to do was to try and do this as inverted commas for homework to see if you got to grips with everything. If you didn't, it's not a big deal. We're going to do it now. So again, it says that for the last two years, the interest is 11.2% compounded monthly. Okay. And the principal was 10,526 rand and three cents coming out of year. Okay. So we're going to say, okay, A is equal to P one plus i to the power of n and then we can say okay equals the principal is 10,526,03 bracket one plus and now it's this it's 11.2 which i've changed to 0 0.112 because it has to be a decimal and then i've divided it by 12 because it's compounded monthly so it's 0, 0,112 over 12 all to the power of the interest is for two years and it's compounded monthly so it's the power of 20 and if you're with me yesterday, remember I said to you that unfortunately my calculator just wouldn't pop up yesterday. I don't know what happened. So I downloaded a new version and here we go. So we're now going to put this in the calculator and if you don't have a very fancy calculator or if you worry a little bit about your calculator work, I'm going to show you how to do this nice and slowly. I will do it 
again also in the one fell suit but I'm going to show you how to do it nice and slow to make sure you get it right so the first thing I would do is I would start with my fraction okay so I'm going to go 0.11 1 2 divided by 12 equals okay then I'm going to add my one add one then I'm going to take it to the power of 24 to the power of 24 and then I'm going to multiply it by the principal times by 1056 point mm, I left out a 2 526.03 and it comes to 13,155 rand and now we have to run up to two decimal places which means we look at the third decimal place and that's a seven which means we need to round up okay so it's 13,155 rand and 14 cents so that's 13,155 rand and 14 cents and that is our final answer okay everybody happy with that right now let's start going through another question before we do that though, sorry, I need to go through nominal and effective rates. Now, all the other, just before I start telling you the difference, all the other formula are on your formula sheet. Your compound interest, your simple interest, depreciation, etc., your uh, future value, your present value, annuities, all of that, they're on your formula sheet. The nominal and effective rates formula is not on your formula sheet so you need to understand the difference between the two and you need to learn the formula and obviously we know how to apply it so first of all a nominal rate nominal means named okay nominal means named or naming so this is the rate that's quoted by the bank it's what they actually say you're going to get where the effective rate is the actual rate you get if you work out the rate over one year period compounded annually Okay, so this is what you'd get if you work out the rate over one year period compounded annually. Okay, so let's look at the formula. The formula is 1 plus I effective. 1 plus I effective is equal to 1 plus I nominal to the power of N. Okay, 1 plus I effective equals 1 plus I nominal all to the power of N. Where I effective is obviously going to be the effective interest rate as a decimal. The I nominal is going to be interest rate, the, no, the named or stated interest rate as a decimal and N is the number of payment periods. So let's have an example. It says find the nominal interest rate per annum compounded semi-annually that is equal to the effective interest rate of 8.5% per annum. Okay, so the first thing we do is we go 1 plus I effective is equal to 1 plus I nom all to the power of N. And remember I said to you yesterday, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to write out what information we have. It says find the nominals. The I nom is what we want. Semi-annually means twice. So N equals 2. That is equal to the effective interest rate. I is going to be 8,5. But remember, we have to change it to decimals. We have to divide that by 100. So it's going to be 0,085. And now all we have to do is substitute the slot into here to get my, my actual nominal interest rate. Okay, so you're going to go 1 plus 0,085 is equal to 1 plus I num all squared. Okay, that's pretty easy because then what are we going to do? We're going to take this and add it so it becomes 1 comma 0, 0,085 is equal to 1 plus I num squared and then to get rid of the square what do we do we square root both sides so we're going to square root both sides and then we're going to subtract one so we're going to go to the square root of one comma zero eight five minus one is going to equal to the nominal interest rate and that's what we're going to put into our calculators oh, i forgot to show you how to get it on one fell swoop didn't i it's okay we'll do another example and i'll show you how okay so we've got the square root 
of 1.085, move over, minus 1 equals, and you press the SC button, and it's 0, 0, 0.042, okay? That's 0, 0, 0.042 equals INOM. But remember, you want the interest rate in percentage, so what are you going to do? You're going to multiply this by 100, and you're going to get 4, 2%. Okay, so it's not difficult. The hardest part is actually learning that and then substituting incorrectly. Okay, that's the hardest part. Right. Oh, there we go. They've done it for us. Sinking funds. So let's talk about sinking funds and the difference between annuity and sinking funds. So sinking funds are a type of annuity. And it's into which money is invested in order to buy equipment in the future. So you can think of a sinking fund as almost like a savings account. Actually, it is a savings account of a type. Savings account. Okay. There are two types of annuities. The one is a future value annuity. And that's used for investments like savings and sinking funds, etc. And then present value annuities, and those are used for bonds and loans. Okay, so in other words, your future value annuities are if, for example, I'm investing a certain amount of money to get out that amount of money in 20 years' time or 10 years' time. So let's say, for example, I decided that I want to go on holiday in two years' time, and I work out that I need 40,000 Rand to go on my holiday. Okay, then what I would do is I would go and invest in a savings account. I'd put money aside every month so at the end of my two years I have my 40,000 Rand. Okay, that's a future value, value annuity. A present value annuity is when I go to the bank and I borrow 40,000 Rand and I spend it now and then I have to pay it off over the next two or three or four years. Okay, so that's the difference. The future value is that we're saving up to get there. The present value is we've been given the money and now we need to pay it back. Okay, so let's talk about the future value formula and you are given this formula. It's just how to use it. You just need to know how to use it. Okay, so it says the future value, FV is the future value. X is the money invested for each period, I is the interest rate, and N is the number of payments. N is the number of payments. So let us go through an example. It says, a school buys photocopiers for 80,000 Rand. Okay. They realize that they will need to replace the machine in five years' time. The inflation rate is 7.5% per annum, and the present equipment will depreciate on a reducing balance at 5% per annum. Okay, so now, first it says find the value of the new machine in five years' time. Find the value of the new machine in five years' time. So in order to find the value of the new machine in five years' time, we're going to have to work out how much it would cost us if we bought it in five years' time. But it tells us that the inflation rate is 7.5% per annum. And what you need to know is the inflation rate is a compound interest equation. Okay? Because each year there's going to be an interest rate of 7.5%. So then you can add it each time. Okay? So our formula for our compound interest, remember, is that A is equal to P. 1 plus i all to the power of n. a is equal to p, 1 plus i to the power of n. Okay, so now, um, what do we have? We've got the principal is the amount of money that we know this costs at the moment. It is 80,000, okay? The Interest rate is going to be 7.5%, 7.5%. So we need to change that to 0, 0, 0.075. And the N, and this is per annum, so that's cool. And the N is five years. So do you agree that we can work out the amount that we need to pay, okay, how much we will need to pay to replace this machine in five years time, but just working out this amount here. So we got A, is equal to P 1 plus I all to the power of N, which is 81, 2, 3, 
times by 1 plus 0, 0, 0.075 all to the power of 5. So it's 80, 1, 2, 3, 1, 0, 0.075 all to the power of 5. Okay, so then we need our calculators. And I almost reached for my own personal calculator. It would have been a bit silly here. Yeah. So let's go through it. So we're going to go 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 
Okay, so what we're going to do is pop that all into our calculator. And I'm really hoping you all got this right. Okay, so we're going to go 80, 1, 2, 3, multiplied by, 1, 2, 3, yep, 1 minus 0 0.05, close bracket, all to the power of 5 equals, and then you press your SD button. And it's 61,902, and again, you need to look at that third decimal, and that's a five, so that has to round that up. So it's 61,902 and 48 cents. 61,902 and 48 cents. So that is going to be the scrap value. Do you agree? This 114,000, let me just write it up here as well because I'm going to need space, I have to erase. The 114,850 and 35 cents is the new value. Okay, now it says they want us to calculate the amount of money needed to buy a new machine if you trade in the old one. Okay, so in other words, how much money would we actually need? Well, do you agree that this is the amount of money, the scrap value is the amount of money we'd get if we still traded it in, and this is the amount of money we'd have had to pay if we didn't have something to trade in. So we could subtract the two, and then we'd end up with the amount of money we actually have to go for. Okay, so let's work that out. Okay, so we're going to say, starting from the beginning, 114850. 0.35 minus 61902.48 equals, and it becomes 52,947 rand, 947 rand and 87 cents. 52,947 rand and 87 cents. So that's how much money we have to earn, okay, we, we, we have to pay out. The amount of money that we have to pay out is 52,947 rand and 87 cents. Okay, now they say, let's erase it all the way up. over 12, whoopsie, hang on a minute, sorry, I've got the little brackets, multiplied to the power of n, which, sorry, is 60, it's okay, I can fill it in, 60 minus 1, close bracket, all over 0, 0,13 over 12. Okay, so do you agree what I could do to make this easier for myself is I could put all of this into the calculator because that's what this is saying. This is saying x times all of that has to equal that. 
So let's do that, but I just want to change the color of the pen first. So I'm going to say 52,947,87 is equal to x times by all of that. So let's do all of that in the calculator. So the easiest way to do this is actually to do a fraction. And then you go open brackets. 1 plus fraction 0 0.1 mm, 0 0.13 all over 12 close bracket to the power of 60 minus 1 all over the fraction of 0 0.13 all over 12 equals, and it's 83.89, 83.89 times by 83,89. So then obviously we need to divide both of these sides by 83,89 to find out what our monthly payments are. So let's do that. So we're going to go 52,947.87 minus, no, sorry, divided by 83,000, 83,89. There were 83,000 coming in. And you get 630 rand and 16 cents. 631 rand and 16 cents. So that's not too bad. 631 rand and 16 cents is how much you need to put away each month so that you can afford this really expensive machine in five years time if you're trading. Okay, so that's not bad at all. That's doable. Okay, especially if you're a big school. Right, let's look at what a present value annuity is. Now remember what I said a present value annuity it was. That's if you've been given the money in advance and you have to repay the money. So it's either if you've been given a loan or if you've taken out a bond or something like that. Okay, so the present value formula is almost identical. There's present value, which is obviously the loan amount. X are the regular repayments, okay, the monthly repayments or weekly or whatever, okay. Um, I is your interest rate. N is the number of intervals over the time period. So let's look at another example. It says Peter buys a house for the value of 650,000 rand. He pays 10% cash as a deposit. The balance is a bank loan. The balance is a bank loan, okay? The interest on the loan is 12% per annum compounded monthly. And next thing it says is determine the monthly repayments if the loan is repaid over 20 years. Okay, so he buys a house for 650,000 Rand, but he doesn't take a loan out for the whole of it, okay? He pays 10% cash as a deposit. So do you agree that 10% of 650,000 equals 65,000? Okay, so that's how much he paid in cash. Okay, the rest he took out in the loan. So the loan amount is actually going to be the 650,000 minus the 65,000, which equals what? Let's just go work it out. So the other way of doing it is going, well, we know that's 90% of 650, 1, 2, 3, equals 585,000. 585,000. Okay, awesome. Now, let's fill in our variables. Remember what I said, you always write them down. We've got PV, X, I, N. Okay, so the present value, the amount of money he took out as a loan was 585,000. They want to know what the monthly repayments were. The interest rate was 12% per annum compounded monthly, so it's going to be 0, 0,12 over, tw sorry, over 12, over 12. Why? 12%, we need to take 12 and divide it by 100 to get it into its decimal, and then it's compounded monthly, and then 12 months in the year, so we divide that by 12. The number of payments, well, it's 20 years, but they paid monthly, so it's 20 times 12, which is 240.
Okay, so now we can substitute that all into this equation. So we've got 585,000 is equal to x, 1 minus bracket 1 plus i is 0, 0,12 over 12 to the minus 240, okay, all over 0, 0,12 over 12. Okay, so now the last time I did the question in the future value equation, I did it all in one go. Um, okay, first before I show you that, I just want to point out that again, what we can do is work out all of this. Okay, and then just divide the 585,000 by all of that to get our X, right? Because our X is our monthly payments. So that's what we're going to do. But then as I was saying, the problem is that last time I did this, I did it all in one go, assuming you'd have a very fancy calculator. Let's pretend you don't have a fancy calculator, or even if you do have a fancy calculator, but you struggle to use it, because sometimes that happens. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to, oopsie, we're going to take it nice and slowly, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is work out what 0 0.12 over 12 is. I'm going to go 0 0.12 divided by 12. Okay, then I'm going to add 1 plus 1, and then I'm going to take it to the power of minus 240, minus 240 equals, oh, that didn't work. Let me try again. Why did that not work? It should work. Okay, 0 0.12 divided by 12 equals plus 1 equals to the power of minus 240 equals I'm a little bit confused as to why that's not working. Um, just give me half a second. I just want to check something. That has to work. Um, because what we're doing is to the power of, I could invert it and take it to the power of. That would work too. Let's try that. Um, okay, so it's going to be 1 plus fraction 0 0.12 divided by 12. Oh, do I have to try again? All over 12 equals, and then I can invert it equals and then that looks that's 0 0.99 and then I can take it to the power of 240. Ha! I don't know what's wrong with this calculator. Okay. <laughs> That's right, okay? I don't know why it wouldn't do it. Okay, maybe I was pressing a wrong button somewhere, but that is how you can also do it, get a way around it. So now what I've worked out is this, okay? I've worked out this bit here, let me show you. All I've done is worked out this bit now. Now I'm gonna subtract it from one, okay? So I'm gonna subtract it from one. So I'm gonna go minus one, because I'm just gonna get the negative version of that. So it's gonna be 0 0.9, Okay, let's add one again. Okay, so it's neg yeah, I was right. So therefore, if I subtract one, sorry, I couldn't remember what I'd written. So it's going to be, it's not negative. I've done it, I've done it the wrong way around. So this is just 0 0.91. So the correct answer here so far is going to be, where were we? 585123x times, and what did we say it was? We said it was 0 0.91. 0, 0,91, and it's still divided by this fraction here. So let me show you how we're going to do that. If we do that, it's 0 0.12, which you should already know by now, divided by 12 is going to be 1 hundredth. So that is actually going to be 0, 0, 0, 1. 0, 0, 0, 1. And now all we have to do is cross multiply. We're going to multiply the 585,000 by 0, 0, 0.01, and we're going to divide by 0, 0.01. Nine one, so let's do that. So we're gonna take that and multiply it by the five eighty five thousand, and then divide it by the naught point nine 
one equals, and that becomes 6,428 Rand and 57 cents. Again, remember we look at the third decimal and we see that the third decimal is actually um, lower than five. So therefore that says the same. So it's 6,428 Rand and 57 cents. 6,428 Rand and 57 cents. And that's how much he has to pay per month on his bond which isn't actually that bad if you see that he's got a 650,000 Rand house. Okay, so that is the one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is, I'm just gonna show you in the calculator, if you have fancy calculators, you have no problem with calculators, then I would do the whole of this in one fell swoop. And I do wanna show you, and grade 12, there is a reason why I'm showing you this. It's not because I have nothing to, better to do with my life. It is because I have so many students that it's so frustrating. They know exactly what they're doing. They write it down perfectly. And then what happens is in the they get to the point where they have to put it in their calculator and then suddenly they have a nervous breakdown and or something goes wrong and then they can't get the answer out. And that's frustrating for me because there's lots of marks from that step to the mark, to the final answer, there are quite a few marks. And if you can't get to that final step, you're losing those marks and so frustrating. So what I've done here is I've got one minus the bracket, one plus, and then I've used my little fraction button to write that. Now I'm gonna use the power button to go minus two, 14. I'm hoping this thing's not gonna kick it out again. And then we're gonna go over, and again, it's a fraction of naught, 0.12 all over 12. Ha! And this time it gives you 90.82. And then if you take 90.82 and you divide it into 585,000, you're going to get the same answer. Okay, so there you go. Um, let's move on to another example. Oh, no, sorry. Now it says calculate the total amount of money paid on the house at the end of the 20 years. Okay, well that's very easy because this 6,428 Rand and 57 cents includes the interest, right? So the degree he has paid 65,000 Rand deposit, right? He paid as a deposit. He's also going to pay the 6,428 Rand and 57 cents for 12 times a year for 20 years, okay? So that is the amount of money he's gonna pay entirely. So let's work that out. It's going to be 6428, 6428.57 times by 12 for the months, times by 20 for the years. Okay, and that's just his installments. Now we need to add the 65,000 Rand he paid as a deposit. And it comes to 100, no, 1.6, Rand and 80 cents. Sure, it's almost three times the amount of money. So it's 1,607,000, do you agree that 1.8 million, 1 million would have been three times the money, okay? So therefore, 1.6 million rand for this house. So do you see how banks make money? <laughs> okay, right, so if you ever want to make money, one of the ways is to be a banker. Okay, right, because of all that interest, the difference is the interest that was paid. So another way they could ask you this question in the exams is instead of asking you how much money was actually paid on the house, they could ask you what what portion was was actually the interest. Okay, let's move on. Oh no, we can't. It's the end of the lesson. Okay, thank you grade 12s. Please join me again on Monday and we're going to be doing a lot more finance questions. I've got a whole lot of questions from the old exam papers and we've got some tricky ones. So please join us on Monday and you can work through it with me. Have a great weekend. Cheers. <laughs>